everybody, it's Stacy Duffy here, your Denver Metro Real Estate Resource, and I finally admitted that I'm not gonna get out of my home office today. It's three o'clock, so <laughs> um, I'm still a bit casual. But um, anyway, I'm probably just gonna go change into my comfy clothes for the day, because I realized that this was not worth the effort of trying to clean up for. But I wanted to do a quick kind of market update for y'all because you seem to be liking those videos. So I'm happy to shoot more of them of just anecdotal evidence and kind of what I'm seeing in the marketplace. So, and I'll quote a few stats, but nothing general enough for the entire Metro because I don't really think that means much to most people. I think it's all relational and anecdotal. It kind of conveys the story a little bit more. So anyway, I have got, um, right now, I've got three buyers, one under contract last weekend, um, one under contract a couple nights ago, and then one we just submitted the offer on this morning, given the offer deadlines for the property. So just to give you an idea of what I'm seeing there as far as across the metro, in different price points, different marketplaces, different neighborhoods, and different qualification levels as far as the buyers, so it's a mixed bag. I know in one of my last videos, the market update videos, I posted how it's not quite the bloodbath I was expecting, um, which was definitely true for that buyer in that market. And it's true for some of my buyers, but not all of them right now. So what I'm um, doing for all of my buyers, and I think in this kind of market, it definitely helps you get a pulse on it a little bit quick, a little bit quicker, is pulling a quick uh, comparative market analysis and I don't have one sitting on my desk because I usually don't print them out if I don't have to I just pull them up for reference but essentially what I'm trying to get is the sold to list price ratio for the most recently closed comparable listings and that's not exact comps on the house but that's like okay I want to buy down in Parker near the in Canterbury near the golf course okay so then I'm going to pull the last maybe 30 to 60 days of properties, both active, under contract, and closed. So that's going to be about roughly 30 days of closed properties, um, as well as the other two to show how quickly they're going under contract on the pendings and then what's available to buy. So it gives me a quick idea of inventory, quick idea of um, how things are going under contract, and then a quick idea of the sold stats. And when I look at that, I'm going to look at that sold to list price ratio for those sold listings and then how quick things are going under market. So um, and even if it's not the exact size house or something like that, it's just, Hey, a buyer that's looking at this type of property in this general area, how thing, you know, how many are there, how quick are they selling and how much are they selling for over list price? Right? So on that sold to list price ratio, I'm seeing all kinds of stuff guys. Um, but general, and yes, it's going to be a hundred percent or more because our market's nuts and things move fast and whatever. I think we've all kind of accepted that. But so to give an idea for um, one of my clients that is looking at higher end properties, you know, has to be a really nice view, has to be nice updates, higher budget um, for that particular neighborhood that they're looking at our median to average, depending on, you know, how many properties there are, I'll, I'll balance whatever stat makes the most sense. But maybe they're three to four percent over list price and things are going in five to 14 days. So maybe it won't sell on the first weekend, it'll sell on the second weekend, that kind of thing. Um, and they're going a little bit over the list price, but it's not, you know, crazy medieval bloodbath. Okay, cool. Um, so for, and for that buyer, just to give you an example, we got under contract on a property that they had previously been under contract on, um, but had been, the price was reduced. And so we couldn't come to terms the first time. Um, and then the seller ended up reducing the price and then they got under contract at the reduced price. So anyway, because the price reductions, as I've shown on my Facebook, because I usually post on Facebook, sorry, I'm not a big Insta person um, and everything else, or Twitter. I don't know who uses Twitter anymore. Maybe the really nerdy people. I don't know. I thought I was up there, but maybe not. Um, so what I post on there is I start to look for those price decreases and back on markets compared to the amount of new listings, right? To give an idea of when that market is starting to shift. And I'm starting to see those numbers change just a little bit, not anywhere to change the market conditions as a general whole, but just to give an, a little bit of idea of, okay, how many offers are we competing against? What's the leverage that we can find? Um, when, you know, are sellers going to start backing off and not be quite as greedy? So anyway, that's that buyer situation. But for another buyer, um, we had one offer to compete against. Like, and it was, I mean, it's a really competitive part of town. Um, it's a very, very cheap property, very small house for that area. And usually about the half the average price point. 
And I was expecting more, but we had one to compete against. So I was like, okay, cool, we can do that. Um, but uh, another buyer, the one that we submitted on this morning, um, running those same stats, as far as to give an idea of the market condition, everything, for that particular type of property in that general area and part of town over on the west side of town, there's not as many of them. So the inventory is definitely much lower, um, less availability. And that sold the list price ratio for everything that it sold in the last month or so, or had closed in 60 days, which usually bought 30 days of properties, was 13 to 14% over the list price. So literally just, and we're talking a $600,000 house versus an $800,000 house um, as far as that difference. So just across the metro, a slight difference in the price point, but a, you know, a, a 20 minute driving distance or 30 minute driving distance across the metro is making a difference of 10% over the list price and availability of inventory. So it's really neighborhood dependent and market dependent. And when people talk about, oh, Denver's nuts and yes, it's this, it's yes, it's this. It's very micro market dependent guys, like neighborhoods can be very different. And so not that every realtor has to know every neighborhood inside and out, because we can't, it's not physically possible if a realtor says they're an expert in every single neighborhood in, in the entire metro area that's, you know, takes an hour to drive across, maybe they've been doing it 30 plus years or something like that. Um, but it's understanding that there's differences and knowing what information to pull that can guide us to recommend a better offer or what's going to be competitive, right? So it's not that we have to know the ins and outs off the top of our head, is we just have to know enough to know what to go pull and to know how to make recommendations there. So anyway, just to give you an idea, I'm still seeing super competitive stuff in certain areas, but not nearly as competitive in others, got under contract on a price reduction. Um, so, and I'm starting to see general uh, statistics for the market shift just a little bit. Now I think that's a seasonal shift. I don't think that's a bubble burst or a market correction or anything like that. I'm talking the typical July, August, September, October seasonal market shift a little bit um, that we had seen in years past, but not in a COVID year because COVID was just all kinds of crazy and people weren't going anywhere and they had money burning a hole in their pocket and weird stuff going on. So anyway, a lot of rambling, like I mentioned, a lot of anecdotal, a few statistics for a few different things. Um, but just wanted to kind of give you an update and make sure if you are shopping with an agent or something, ask them for, hey, can you go pull that sold to list price for this general area? Or how quick are the properties selling? Are they selling in three days or are they selling in 14 days? Um, if that's information you're looking for, ask them. They have the ability to do that. Maybe not all agents know how to do that. Um, that's kind of my standard go-to because I want to make sure that I can be an advocate for my clients and that I know how to... Um, help them strategize and be as competitive as possible without spending any more money than they have to if that's their goal. So anyway, but thanks so much for the time. Just a couple tidbits for this week and I'll see when I can post this if I get around to that. <laughs> um, so it's timely uh, information for y'all. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for the time. If you're looking to buy or sell here in the Denver metro area, I would be happy to help. Please feel free to reach out to me directly. My contact information is on my website and the link for that is, oh, wrong way down below. If you're liking my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. I got the whiteboard up this morning, but I haven't gotten the two-year-old scribbles from when it was down on the ground off just yet. So I'll get that cleaned up for you guys as I try to get these little things stuck in here and there. And um, yeah, thanks so much for the time and y'all have a good one. Bye.